All right, so we've gotten good at counting our triplets. Uh, one lolly, two lolly, three lolly, four lolly. And now they're like, well, guess what? There's a time signature for that. So we don't always have to write triplets because you'll notice on page 22 when they wrote the triplets, they have a three above it so that you know that there's gonna be three uh, of those eighth notes in one beat. Um, but you can write a time signature where it's always triplets and they don't have to keep writing that. So they, uh, if you look at the red box on page 23, it shows you six, eight time. Um, and it says six beats or counts to a measure, but the eight now means that an eighth note gets one beat. So in the past, we've done a lot of time signatures where four is the bottom number, and that means a quarter note. Remember, we pretend it's a fraction. And so the bottom number now is an eight, so an eighth note gets one beat. So you look in the um, uh, box, it shows you how to count. You're gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six. One, three, four, six. One, four. One. So uh, you'll see the different patterns of how you have quarter notes and eighth notes. So quarter note now is going to get two of those beats because the eighth note is the beat, right? And then to get, um, you'll get the two dotted quarter notes will fill up a measure or one dotted half note is six eighth notes. So it'll fill up a whole measure. It also shows you in the box, the rest patterns. So you can see if you were to do all eighth notes in rest, you'd have six of them. Uh, and then if you did quarter note, eighth rest, quarter note, eighth rest. And then if you did dotted quarter note rest, I don't know if you've seen too many of those before, um, but that takes up uh, a one, two, three. And then uh, you'll see the whole rest always represents the whole measure, regardless of how many beats. So that sometimes can be tricky when you're in like two, four time and you see a whole rest and you think, oh, I count for four beats, but really it's only two beats because it's in two, four time. So different things that are kind of unique and quirky about music. All right, so uh, 99, uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, count it out and then um, play it. And I want you to play on your favorite note today. All right, so one, two, three, ready, set, count. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, four, one, three, four, six, one. All right, so if you need to go back and count that again because that was a little tricky, I uh, totally understand. Nobody knows but you. So um, go ahead and uh, do that again if you're not quite sure about, um, especially like measure two and measure three, how those are going to work out. If you're ready to play it, let's go ahead and play it. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> says to write in your counting. So make sure you do that. Go ahead and press pause and then we'll check your work. Okay, so hopefully you've written it in. Let's see if you've gotten this one right. So it's different than writing the one lolly, two lolly. This time you're writing uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, up to that many numbers, right? Okay, so in 100, you have one, two, three, four, five, six. Next measure is one, three, four, six. The next measure, one, two, three, four, five, six. And the last measure, one, right? So um, let's go ahead and play it. If you'd like to practice pizzicato with me first, just to make sure you know when to move from that quarter note to the eighth note in the second measure, that'd be totally fine. Um, or if you're ready to go for the bow, remember it's a it's a two to one ratio. I just talked about this last time. So it's a one, two, three, four, five, six. All right. So let's go ahead and play. Number 100. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> note it's got to get six eighth notes so it's got to be just as long as the measure before it except it's one bow all right uh 101 slurring 
uh, we're gonna go ahead and YOLO this. All right, uh, which means we're just gonna go dive in because uh, I wanna move on to 102 and 103. So um, you are welcome to um, practice this as much as you'd like. Uh, I'm just gonna go for it, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six. Eight time. So, how many beats does a dotted quarter note get in six eight time? So, if you said one and a half, you're in the wrong time signature. That's how much it gets if we're in a time signature that has a four at the bottom. But remember, the eighth note gets the beat. So, how many eighth notes fit into a dotted quarter note? Three. So, hopefully, you're realizing it gets, it's going to get three beats. So when you get there, it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, one, two, three, or one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, let's go ahead and play number 102. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> for me since I had that, that squawk on that C sharp. I'm not sure what's going on. This violin does not like C sharps. Um, I think it might have been your video um, from last week or another video from last week. I had a hard time with these C sharps coming in uh, clearly without giving me the squawk. So, all right, let's try that again for me. 102. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> folk song uh, in 6-8 time. So it's a little different if you um, are used to hearing this from the Suzuki book for cello or even uh, if you played it last year in uh, book one, in Sound Innovations book one. Obviously it's different because it's in 6-8 time, but they also uh, changed it up a little bit. So you can't just always go by ear, you really have to read what the notes are. Um, I think you've got this, so we're going to go for it. And again, if you need to pizzicato with me first or write in notes or whatever you need to do, Go ahead and pause so that you can figure it out, and when you're ready, press play to do it with the bow. One, two, three, four, five, six. to see you guys uh, on Monday in the Zoom meeting or just in the next video. All right. Bye, guys. <laughs>